suppose that the photography of Ernst As is a lot like poetry. It's about capturing the many qualities and the many beauties of the world. And like poetry, it's about thinking or let's say rendering those emotions and awakening the emotions in other people, um, feelings such as loneliness, sadness, happiness, love, all sorts. And like poetry, it's about letting you come in with your subjectivity and build an emotional relationship with what you see. So it's about letting you see other things and let you think about what you just saw. And that is very valuable in today's world. And this is why I found it somewhat pertinent to do this video, which has been much requested by you, even though I was somewhat reluctant at first because Ernest Haas is one of my favorite photographers of all time and I don't want to mess it up. So I hope I don't. And with that being said, let's go straight into the video and to the great, awesome, perfect, whatever it is that we can classify the, let's say, going over the medium photography of Ernst As. Ernst As grew up in Vienna before World War II. His parents were both educated government officials and they encouraged him in his creative endeavors. And so he studied in a private school in Vienna between 1935 and 1938, seeing his education being interrupted by the invasion of Austria and World War II. He said at some point that he never really wanted to be a photographer. It slowly grew out of the compromise of a boy who desired to combine two goals, explorer and painter. I wanted to travel, see and experience. What better profession could there be than the one of a photographer, almost a painter in a hurry, overwhelmed by too many constantly changing impressions. And the truth is that Ernst As didn't pick up photography until the 1940s, and I think something that really led to this was the death of his father in 1940, who loved photography and always encouraged As to try photography himself. So, at the age of 25, Ernst As picked up his first camera, a Roliflex TLR model, and started documenting the world around him. And soon, As realized that photography could support him while also being a channel to communicate his ideas and emotions. And so, after his first exhibition at the American Red Cross in Vienna in 1947, As started getting assignments for important magazines at the time, such as Du, Heute and Life magazine, being the first photographer in Life magazine to ever publish a photo essay in color in 1953. And it was around the time of the production of this essay that As swapped his Roliflex for Leica cameras. First a Leica M3, which he paired with a 50 and 135mm lenses, and then a Leica Flex, which he paired with a 28, a 50 and a 90mm lens. And this transition to Leica cameras or more portable cameras, 35mm, etc., was also accompanied by an almost full transition to color. And I say almost because he did shoot black and white for the rest of his life here and there, but for most of his body of work, he also explored color photography, and in this case, the use of color to bring dramatism and to explore depth and emotion in photos. So it's interesting to look at this, and also he shot a lot of Kodachrome, and he favored this film because of its saturation and its highly saturated colors. And to print, he used a dye transfer print system, and um, I've actually heard a lot about this. There's going to be some information down below for you if you are curious. And if you know anyone in the UK who does this or has knowledge about this, please reach out to me because I really wanted to learn more about it. And possibly if somebody actually does this, maybe reach out and have a video about it, which I think I've seen with the work of so many photographers. And I really wanted to learn, but not through books. I wanted to learn with a hands-on experience. So yeah, let me know. And when we look at Ernst As's photography, although a lot of people will immediately say color, 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 to me it's all about focus, motion, depth of field, and then yes, color. Because As's photography has 
taught me how important it is to define depth of field and to practice a selective focus and what these things bring to my photography and the ideas they can help transmit through still photos. To me, the blurred motion of his photos, which he also achieved with slow shutter speeds, it's a metaphor for something else. A feeling, a sound, even time itself. And that's the thing because you can look and perceive this however you want. It's not formal, it's not close, it's rather open and allows you to fill in the gaps of that blurred motion, of that out of focus color with your feelings, your emotions, whatever it is that it reminds you. And as I was deep diving into the work of Ernst Haas, I also read a, th a lot of things about him and he had this line that for some reason really resonated with me and unsettled me into like making me more, um, forcing a change in my photography. And he said something like um, picking an object and transforming that object into what you want it to be. So this obviously is about your subjectivity, it's about all that he applies to his photography, say cars are not just simply cars, um, become, they become something else due to that blurred colour, that motion blur. And this has forced me to change because I too have recently, and also inspired by Ernst Haas and Sol Leiter, I have been photographing and been playing with this idea of motion, of blur, and leaving things out of focus or really practice a selective focus. This is something important to do, especially in the times that we live in, which a lot of us can't go out freely and photograph and do photo walks. So it's important to take this time to sit down reevaluate, put some things forward, some ideas, um, push for some changes and really get inspired. Um, because we know that this is a good opportunity in a way because as we were living our normal lives, we probably didn't have time to sit down with a book, think or go through photos or kind of like analyze this and here, this and that. Um, and now we do have the time. So I think that's something precious and that's something that we should force, which is to think about our photography, reevaluate and push for more. And so besides his magazine assignments, Ernst Haas was also known for his commercial work. He traveled the world photographing different subjects from plants to people, streets, landscapes, and engaged in various ambitious projects, one of which we will be discussing soon in the channel. But I can't tell you now because, well, we got to keep some suspense going on. The photography of Ernst Haas is very different in terms of like what we usually see, in terms of like certain formalisms, um, it breaks a lot of rules and uh, that's good because I also don't believe in rules and this is going to show how important it is to think out of the box, to play with what you have, train your eye as a photographer as or your mind, you know, as a photographer, as a creative person, as a, an artist, whatever it is that you do because it's not going to be that expensive pen, it's not going to be that expensive newspaper, or the expensive camera that's going to take you somewhere, it's going to be your qualities and your way of seeing the world and what Ernst has proved is that he saw the world very differently and to me he saw the world as a painter and that idea of wanting to be a painter since he was a young boy really comes across in his photos especially in the way he practices texture and especially color he was someone that looked at color and thought this was a channel to emphasize ideas about loneliness, emphasize ideas re regarding the importance of color, regarding the psychology of color. And I think it's important to train our eye and our thought into looking at the world in different ways outside of the box and not so much on gear and on expensive stuff. Yes, I do have expensive cameras, but I got it for specific reasons and not so much because I wanted to have it because it was expensive or because I ever thought that it would make me a better photographer. Because it doesn't. And there will be uh, links in the description for Ernst Aziz's works, also some recommendations of books, um, so you're more than welcome to Join in the conversation in the comments, um, tell me what you think, uh, suggest more photographers. And yeah, I guess that is all for today. And I have to say, stay safe, keep shooting film whenever possible. And um, I'll see you here for another video very soon.
Peace.